Frogs are absolutely awesome. These little amphibians have captured the hearts and minds of many people, but those same people don't seem to grasp that frog populations around the world are in grave danger. 41% of amphibian species assessed by the IUCN are threatened with extinction, so they need more help than ever. Let us meet one of them before they will probably go extinct. On today's episode of Endangered Inhabitants, we'll be taking little hops into the world of Mantella auritica, the golden mantella. Frogs are amphibians of the class Amphibia. This grouping encompasses all tetrapods, excluding the amniotes, the tetrapods with an amniotic membrane that covers the embryo, such as reptiles, birds, and mammals. The first amphibians evolved during the Devonian around 400 million years ago, but became ecologically dominant during the subsequent Carboniferous and Permian periods, later becoming displaced in most terrestrial environments by early reptiles and basal synapsids, who were better able to handle being away from water. Our modern amphibians are found in the subclass Lysamphibia, which contains all frogs, toads, salamanders, newts, and Sicilians. This group for sure first appeared during the Triassic, with genre-like Triodobactricus already showing very frog-like characteristics. Frogs and toads, which are really just frogs, are then classed in the order Anura, first appearing in the Jurassic period around 200 million years ago. Today's frog of interest is found in the family Mantellidae that are only found on the islands of Madagascar and Mayotte. This group is composed of extremely diverse groups of frogs, with at least 237 species found across three subfamilies. The Bufinae are arboreal tree frogs that share more in common with the true tree frogs of the family Hyliidae than the other Mantellas. The Leolostominae are terrestrial and fairly large, and the Mantellinae are typically either terrestrial or semi-aquatic, including our guy. Being found in the subfamily Mantellinae, these guys are found in the genus Mantella with 15 other recognized species. Despite looking and behaving like the poison dart frogs of the family Dendrobatidae found in Central and South America, this is a result of convergent evolution, the independent evolution of similar features in species of either different periods of time or different lineages altogether. These frogs are tiny! Females are a little larger, between 24 to 26 millimeters in length, compared to the males that are only 20 to 22 millimeters in length. While no source I could find gave a weight, I can estimate that they are about a wee small, just with a quick eye test. They live an average of 5 years in the wild, but can live up to 12 years in captivity. Probably the most striking feature these frogs possess is their coloration. They can come in three different forms that remain uniform these being yellow, orange, and red. These eye-popping colors, similar to the more well-known poison dart frogs of the Americas, are an example of a posmatism, the advertising by an animal to potential predators that it is not worth attacking or eating, as they have a nasty surprise in store even if you took just a nibble. The golden mantella has black eyes, although there may occasionally be golden pigmentation in the upper portion of the iris. The tympanum, the external hearing structure various animals possess, including our ears, is visible but extremely small. Their specialized skin, as with most amphibians, is semi-permeable, allowing for the assistance in respiration through gas exchange, water absorption, and thermoregulation. While making bodily processes simpler, the fact that their skin is semi-permeable makes them very sensitive to toxins that aren't their own, which can kill them. Their legs are short, and the tips of their fingers and toes bear distinctive adhesive pads used for climbing. These tiny guys are found only in central eastern Madagascar, being endemic, meaning that a species or taxonomic group is found in one particular country or geographic area. They are found in three distinct areas centered around the town of Moramanga, the Torotorofosi wetland northeast of Enesi Bay, and the area of Ambokana. They usually inhabit mossy or grassy mounds of forest debris that border shallow swampy waters, like in the forest composed of trees in the genus Pandanus. They mostly survive in climates that are moist, humid, and temperate. Golden mantellas are considered an upland species, as they can be found at a maximum altitude of about 900 meters. As with most small frogs, these little fellas have a diet of small invertebrates. Wild individuals have diets consisting of mites, termites, ants, flies, and springtails, aka columbolans. 
They will eat any small invertebrates that can fit in their mouths, as captive individuals do with the crickets they're often given. Mantellas of all kinds spend most of their waking time hunting, using their sight to locate potential food items. They will move between different spots and snap up any unlucky invertebrates they can happen to sneak up on as they slowly meander through the undergrowth. Like frogs are famous for, they use those sticky tongues to latch onto nearby prey. Their prey is often toxic, but these mantellas, again like the poison dart frogs of the Americas, can retain these toxins and repurpose them for their use in their own defense. The toxic alkaloids in this derma-sensitive cocktail include, oh boy, Pulumiotoxins, allopulumiotoxins, homopulumian toxin alkaloids, pyrolizidines, indolizidines, and quinolizidines. It should be noted that no mantella is considered dangerous to humans. As they only get those toxins from prey in the wild, captive individuals aren't poisonous unless taken directly from the wild. These frogs are diurnal, being most active during the day. They are highly seasonal in their behavior and remain largely inactive during the winter months of May to October to save energy when it becomes often colder, as these animals cannot thermoregulate like us mammals. Once the summer arrives, from November to the end of March, they will reactivate in the hot and rainy conditions. These frogs live in groups of typically twice as many males as females. With those big ol' peepers, these frogs, and frogs in general, have excellent vision which they use to acquire their daily bread. These mantellas use auditory cues to communicate with each other, with males clicking and chirping to attract females and warn off any competing males, just like I do. During the breeding season, males will often call from concealed positions near a water source to attract any receptive females in the vicinity. Typically, frogs will engage in a mating behavior known as amplexus, where the male grabs onto the female and rides her back to ensure that he is the only one fertilizing her eggs. Golden mantellas, on the other hand, have the male move himself over the female's back in a virtual amplexus for whatever reason. Once the nasty is completed, Females will lay any fertilized eggs on land in moist leaf litter near water. When the rain arrives, the tadpoles are washed from the land into water where, as you should know as frogs are the poster child for this along with butterflies, undergo metamorphosis. Their larvae are known as tadpoles or polywogs if you're cultured. They are born in perfect form for swimming, until they eventually grow legs and absorb their tails as they transform into their adult form. As they are strapped to the teeth with poison, very few animals are willing to try and predate these frogs. Those few animals that will eat adults include the lateral water snake and the lizard members of the genus Sonosaurus that are sympatric with the mantellas. Tadpoles aren't toxic like the adults, meaning they are much more vulnerable to predation from a whole host of critters in their watery home. Golden mantellas are listed as endangered on the IUCN red list. The number of mature individuals is unknown, but their population trend is decreasing while said populations are already severely fragmented. The biggest threat golden mantellas face are habitat destruction and subsequent fragmentation. They are currently restricted to fragments of forests surrounded by degraded land. Any remaining forest is also under threat from subsistence agriculture, timber extraction, legal and illegal natural resource extraction, fires, and expanding human settlements. In the past, overcollecting for commercial and private purposes was a threat, but current harvesting levels have not had a visible effect on the population. Invasive species may also be a cause for concern. The Asian common toad was first recorded in Madagascar in March of 2014 in the city of Talmacina. Species distribution models suggest that there is a high probability of this invasive toad occurring in the range of our mantella, increasing the risk of disease transmission and food web disruption. Amphibians around the world are currently facing their own mass extinction event from the spread of uh, this since the 1980s. This fungus causes the disease chytridiomycosis in infected amphibians that causes a breakdown in the skin, which can cause sporadic deaths in some populations and 100% mortality in others. 
It has affected 30% of amphibian species worldwide, and could become a threat to Malagasy frogs in the very near future as it continues to spread. I would like to thank each and every one of you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. Make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more garbage like this in the future. I'm trying to get into more of a rhythm to make as many videos as possible, but I procrastinate so bad that it can be very hard. I'm actually going to Florida in a few days, so I'm gonna try my hardest to get my next video out before then, but no promises seeing as I'm seemingly inept at everything these days. Everyone have a great day. Peace.